Hey everyone, this is Scott here again with another video to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And this video today is gonna to be one of my more introductory pieces into the world of investing and trading. And so in this video in particular, I'll be talking about what is the stock market, how it works, and why it exists. Now before we get started, I do wanna say that if you are interested right now and learning on a very in-depth level about options, options trading, stock market investing, all that good stuff, please check out my courses on Skillshare. I've been teaching on that platform for over a year at this point. Skillshare is very similar to YouTube, except the content in there is geared solely towards the purpose of education and online classes. And I take a deep dive into a lot of these concepts showing research that I've done, analysis, and software programs that I have written to help simulate and prove the points that I am demonstrating. And I provided some links to some of the more introductory courses in the description of this video below. Now, one thing to note is you will need a premium level subscription to the Skillshare platform to watch my courses. But if you do sign up for that kind of membership with the links provided in the description of this video, you will get an absolutely free two week trial. And you can watch all my courses on Skillshare for free during that time. And then after your trial has ended, it's literally gonna cost you a few dollars a month. Skillshare is super affordable and I know you'll get a ton of value out of it. So please check those out. And so now getting into the core content of this video, what is the stock market? Well, quite literally, it is a marketplace, just like you would consider going to the grocery store, the market, to buy your groceries or your food. It may not be an actual physical marketplace, but that's exactly what it is. When you go to the grocery store, for example, in that case, when you enter the marketplace there, you are the buyer, you are looking for various items that you want to purchase, and you purchase those items from the sellers, i.e. the producers of those items. And the stock market's the same thing. It's a marketplace, there are buyers, there are sellers, and they are trading, in this case, stock or shares of a company. And there are actually multiple marketplaces in which stock is actually exchanged or traded between the buyers and the sellers. So you have individual branded grocery stores like Pavilions or Albertsons, and then in the stock market world, you have individual marketplaces like the New York Stock Exchange. That is the name of one place, one exchange or marketplace where stock is actually traded between buyers and sellers, and there are many others. And so now this brings me to my next point of, now what is stock, right? What is this specific item that is being traded between the buyers and sellers in the stock market? Well, stock refers to basically two main concepts. It's tied to two main things. The first of which is stock represents ownership, an ownership stake in the specific company that you are trading. So for example, if you bought one share of Apple stock, and share in this case is the name you refer to a quantity of one individual stock. So if you bought one share of Apple, you now own a very, very, very small piece of the actual company. And the more shares you purchase, the more shares of stock you accumulate in your portfolio, the greater your ownership stake in Apple becomes. And eventually, if you accumulated or purchased enough shares, and this would cost millions and millions of dollars, but if you had the money to purchase that many shares of Apple, at some point you would become a significant, one of the top shareholders in the company. And in that case, you would have significant voting power and influence on the actual direction of the company. And that should make sense, right? Because if you are one of the top shareholders, that means you have one of the largest slices of ownership in the whole company. So of course your opinion, your say, your voice should have power in what the company does. And so that's the first thing that stock represents. The second thing is stock also represents the current market's valuation for the company. In other words, what is the actual value for Apple as an entire company? And the way you calculate this number is you simply take the total number of shares that are floating out there in the stock market. There is a finite number of Apple shares. And so you take that number and you just multiply it by the current share price of the stock. What is the stock trading for? might be 100 bucks, 120. So you just take the current price of one share of Apple stock, multiply it by the total number that are out there, and that will give you the current market's valuation for Apple as a company. And when I say the market's valuation, I'm referring to the market as the collective millions and millions of people that actually make up the stock market. There would be no market without all the people to be buying and selling the stock, right? And at a certain point in time, whatever the price of Apple stock may be, that is the collective consensus at that point in time of what Apple as a company is currently worth. And this valuation of the company changes every second, every day, every week, every month, every year. 
and the company's market valuation and therefore the stock price can change for any reason, any reason at all. It could be something that's actually well known if it's in the news, maybe it's a big earnings announcement, maybe it's some change in the upper management of the company, whatever, or it could be for a reason completely unknown. And that's one of the mysterious and fascinating things about the stock market is that it can do things that make no sense at all sometimes. And sometimes it can make perfect sense and you just have to roll with it no matter what because you are just one person in a huge sea of other people with different ideas and opinions and different positions and just you by yourself with your own perspective and opinion on what the company is worth is not going to sway the minds of everybody else. Okay, so at this point, we've now discussed what the stock market is, what is stock, but now why does this whole thing even exist in the first place? What is the point of companies actually issuing stock to be traded in the marketplace? And the answer for that is quite simple, to raise money or to raise capital, right? Companies need money oftentimes from external sources to maintain their day-to-day -day business activities. And this is because for a lot of companies, the profit that they're able to generate from selling their products or their services is not enough to actually fund the operations of the corporation. Some companies don't even have a profit yet, so they have no choice but to raise capital by issuing stock in the market. And there are many other ways as well that companies can raise capital. Another way is through issuing debt, right? So for example, you can literally loan a company your money with the promise that they'll pay you back in full plus extra on top, which is called interest, right? It's a much more simplistic way of raising capital. You simply give me money, I can use it to run my company, and then at some point in the future, I'll pay you back a little bit of extra on top, which is how I incentivize you in the first place to lend me your money. Now stock is a bit more complicated because there is this ownership component to it. And also in the case of bankruptcies, stockholders are actually prioritized less than debt holders and other complexities like that. But stock is simply just another way for companies to raise capital. And so the incentive in this case, right, the reason why people would even bother giving money to a company through the process of purchasing stock is twofold. One, it's partially for that ownership stake that comes with buying stock. Although the main reason though, is for the potential for growth in the company, right? Like I said earlier, if you really wanted to have influence in the company through buying stock, you would have to accumulate millions and millions of shares most likely, which would cost millions and millions of dollars. So again, the main reason why people want to purchase stock is for the hope, the promise, that the stock price is going to increase, meaning the value of the company is going to increase. And the market's valuation for a company can increase for a variety of reasons. It could be that the company has expanded its market share. It could be that the company is now producing more products. They've expanded their product line. It could be that they've acquired other companies and have grown their presence and market share in the process. And it could also be through increasing their revenue and therefore their profits. And of course, there are many, many other reasons why a company's valuation might increase, but those are just a few of the main ones. And if a company were to achieve any one of them, that might be reason enough for the collective consensus of all the people in the marketplace to agree that yes, now the company should be valued at a greater number. And therefore the stock price is gonna to have to increase to reflect that. And that would be a great thing for you if you purchased the stock of that company before the valuation increased. So for example, if you initially bought, let's say one share of Apple stock for $100, and now the company's stock is worth $110 per share, well, you could sell your share back into the market, someone will always buy that from you, and you would have made $10 on that transaction, right? You bought it 100, and you sold it 110, the difference is 10, that's your profit. And that is the main reason why people actually buy stock, invest in companies in the first place. Since the first option is pretty much out of reach for most people, right, i.e gaining a significant ownership stake in the company that requires a lot of capital, which most people don't have, that leaves most people with the second choice, which is finding a company that you think has great growth potential going forward into the future, buying shares of that company's stock, and if you are correct in your assumption, waiting for the stock price to steadily increase, and then at some point, selling those shares back into the marketplace at the higher price and making some money. And so there you go, that's what the stock market is, that's what stock is, and that's why this whole thing exists in the first place. And the whole thing can really be boiled down into this one idea or this one concept. Companies need money, so they issue stock, and people wanna make money, so they buy it. Simple as that. All right, so with that being said, that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed my explanation of what the stock market is, how it works, and why it exists, and all that good stuff. And if you've got questions or you need clarification on something, please post a comment on this video, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.
And again, if you are interested in learning more about stock market investing, options, options trading, and all that, please check out my Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as I really want to blow this thing up as big as I can to help as many people as possible master their finances and become experts at trading and investing. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.